we now know the 47th president of the United States. We he do. was also the 45th president. Um, there's a lot to kind of unpack here. Yeah. Again, I started this podcast by saying, and I've been very consistent in my messaging about politics and all those things, but I do feel the heaviness, the eeriness of the aftermath of the election. Um, I was watching it as if it was game seven of the World Series, like I did, you know, the last World Series mm -hmm. when it ended so abruptly. I was like, hey, Yankees, we got this. Yeah, we did. All right, we was up 5-0 in the fifth <laughs> inning. Like, there was a plus 800 for the Dodgers to win, mm. and somehow they won. Like, I was watching this election and these electoral college votes mm -hmm. and, and all of those things yeah. as if it was a game seven of the NBA Finals. Same. I'm not going to lie, it was that entertaining. And so it was entertaining. It, and, and also... Um, I try to liken it so everything for me, and this is just me, I'm talking for me personally. I look at music, I look at entertainment, I look at politics, I look at sports as a form of entertainment and a distraction, an escape almost. Mm -hmm. um, but this is one of the more important and life affecting, life changing events, whether you view it as entertainment or not, right? I watch the Super Bowl each and every year. The Super Bowl is not going to dictate my life mm -hmm. or the generation after me. But the presidential election is one of those things where it has consequences. Mm -hmm. um, and so regardless of how you feel about this, this is a very important time of year. Uh, Donald Trump is the president. Yes. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. How, how do you guys feel about, you know, what happened this past week? I think, well, just to speak to us, like watching the election live and stuff like that. For me, I know a lot of people woke up and were like, I'm disappointed, but not surprised. Mm -hmm. For me, and I get that, like, I'm usually like an optimistic person, but I'm not so positive to the point where like, I'm so like, I don't understand what's going on. Like, I knew, I know America's racist. I know America's inherently, you know, the core values. I know that. I know there was like a big chance of um, Donald Trump winning, but I genuinely like thought, Kamala could win this election. Like mm -hmm. I, ever since that, ever since Biden gave the endorsement and Barack Obama as well, I was along for the ride. Like mm -hmm. I really was tapped in. I was trying so hard to keep up with everything. Like, and I know the polls always said it was super close. So I don't know, man. I really thought she had a chance to win genuinely in my heart. And, and then I woke up. I didn't stay up uh, all night. I woke up to the news. Yeah. And I was surprised. I wasn't one of the people that like genuinely was not surprised. I was genuinely surprised. I was like, is this is this for really? real? And then I went through the stages of denial. I was like, okay, is there a chance where shit could have been corrupt? Is this really the result? And then the speech today at Howard uh, University, she officially conceded. I'm like, okay, this is our reality. What do we do next? So that is what I was feeling this morning. And definitely, I'm so glad we recorded this at night. The emotions have definitely settled. I definitely cried my eyes out because it's very scary as a woman. But, like, I'm good now. You know, I'm good now. Can I ask but you why it's scary through. as a woman? So, like, um, I wouldn't say, when I talk about politics, I would never say, like, I'm a political expert. Like, come to me. I know everything. I would never say that. I always lead with that. But I had a lot of political science homies when I went to college and high school. So I remember talking to them. I'm like, I want to get involved. But, like, I don't know. I, I don't know much you know i'm not that political girl how do i get involved and this guy will don he changed my life he was like i would recommend that you pick some issue this is for all the people who want to get involved more but don't know where to start right. he gave me the advice of like hey pick some issues that you're very passionate about and look up the candidates views on that and start from there you don't have mm. to stick to just two issues but start from there that's a good jumping point so for me like my whole life i've always like i'm not political like super political but I would say there are issues that I'm very, very, very passionate about. So that's racism, homophobia, bodily autonomy, and reproductive rights for women, like protecting those. So, and I feel like in this election, that was like so amplified, which is why I was so tapped in. And it would be one thing if it was just Trump winning the election because his agenda, he's made very clear. He wants to put nationwide abortion bans, all these crazy things. It would be one thing if it was just him winning but they literally flipped the senate they literally like the republicans got all in there so it's like i feel like it was so scary this morning because it wasn't just the presidential news it was more like these crazy agendas that he has he might like he could actually very well put these in place that is what was so scary um me growing up in new jersey and having all my friends being from new york we always grew up in a blue state so i'm used to having conversations with my doctor about all these things being open about it but now 
I really feel like that could be taken away, and I just like don't know how to feel right now. So that is why it was very scary for me this morning. <laughs> but I've chilled out since then. So <laughs> I think Charlamagne had mentioned this. He said, um, he wishes that the Biden administration would have been a bit more clear mm -hmm. on how Biden was going to go about the next election. Mm. Because to your point, Reggie, I think it probably would have helped Kamala just a little bit more if she had more time. Yeah, The country essentially had to learn about her in less than six, seven months. Yeah, And everybody's been knowing about Trump even when his last tenure was president, right? Mm. So I think that uh, affected them on that side. Um, for me in general, the way I feel about it is I enjoy the fact that the United States of America is a democracy. I truly enjoy that, for real, for and I, I hope it intends to stay that way. You know, um, it, 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 I see a lot of people out there scared, a lot of people out there excited. I just hope that, you know, we have a president that looks after everyone. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of where I'm at with that. You uh, mentioned Charlemagne. Yeah. I do want to play a clip from The Breakfast Club. Uh, as we know, Charlemagne, a lot of his contemporaries, especially on The Breakfast Club, have endorsed uh Kamala Harris um and so I do want to play a clip because I feel like this clip gave me more of a perspective than I already had um we could have the debates about human rights and women's rights and men's rights and uh, the financial space of the country inflation all of these things matter right um the decision is the decision we're not going to change it I thoroughly believe that we need to focus on what we can control and that's, you know, being productive as a person, uh, fulfilling yourself, control the things you can't control. This is one of those things that obviously we can't control. But I do want to highlight some of the things that Charlamagne said. I think it was really informative. It gave a different perspective to me. Um, and yeah, let's let's take a listen. I think I think that's a strong point because he, uh, Trump ended up winning the popular vote, any electoral vote. Mm -hmm. So to a lot of the things that he mentioned, I'm sure there were people that felt that way. But I'll say this, right? I'll speak personally. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm not, this might be a little funny, but this is really how I feel. I like my presidents to be a, a bit predictable. What do you mean by that? Yeah. I like my presidents. I like my presidents to be predictable. I like checks and balances. I don't right. know if there's any checks or balances. I know there's going to be a lot of checks. <laughs> I don't know how much balance there's going to be over the next four years. But I understand what you're saying. That, yeah, right. So I get what you're saying. I, I, unpredictability in presidents. I don't really look for it. Mm -hmm. I, for one, uh, like we said, we put God first for of sure. all first, but I think it's important to have checks and balances across mm -hmm. all forms and branches of government. That way, an individual, no one person, no matter the party, mm -hmm. is just able to do whatever they would like to do, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, yeah, it's uh, we're interesting times, but when you get a predictable president, see, I, I like when the president just can't do anything they want. I that's, like that. That really is balance. You know? I like that. I truly like that. I, know I mean, most but that's people... the whole position of the president. You're not supposed to be able to do anything you yeah. want. But it seems well, as if times. Donald Trump has been able to kind of flex that power, in a sense. Mm -hmm. He's been able to kind of, and again, it appears, again, I'm not the most political, but it just seems as if he's been able to kind of shift and move his power as he wanted. And again, it is a reminder to anybody that's listening, the Democrats do not control you. The Republicans do not control you. Um, you are in control of your life. Yeah. And so despite how you feel about uh, the results of this election, I do want people to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, ultimately, you control how you make your life feel. You know? Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's how I personally feel. No, I agree. That's why I wanted so many people to, uh, to make sure that they voted, right? Like a lot of people that were talking shit about not wanting to vote or their shit means nothing, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They lived in swing states. And it's like, dog, if you could have had some input into what was going on, maybe a senator would have been differently, right? Maybe mm -hmm. some local government around you could be different. But mm -hmm. when you just go into things so cut and dry, and that's maybe that's the fault of this country as well, Reggie, right? Mm -hmm. Like... We've shaped it to have people believe that it's just the electoral college. Mm -hmm. it's like, yo, or bro. like it's just the president. Or if it's just the president, yeah. where it's like, yo, a lot more people get elected. Yeah, that's really the yeah. main takeaway as well. Like, I feel like I feel like we have this conversation every four years where right. people get really obsessed about the presidential election. And rightfully so, it's the biggest election. Like, I get it. Mm. But I guess, like, if you're feeling, like, very hopeless and... It's, I guess the message would be to like get involved in your communities more, get involved in your local elections more. I feel like there's still room for change there as well. Yeah. 
I don't know, man. Shit is looking crazy, it's though. Crazy. Like, I feel like I, the last time, I can't remember. I don't know if I was too young, but the last time, well, before Trump, obviously, that there was a Republican president, there wasn't this sense of, like, despair for me. Like, there really wasn't. You were younger. Social really, media was different, too, know, so maybe things weren't like, as amplified. Yeah, I guess. And I guess I'm just, like, older, so I'm more aware about how these things affect my life, so... I don't know, man. Yeah. Shit is crazy. It's getting really crazy out here. It's getting a lot. You know, um, for me, real talk, it's the checks and balances thing for me. And it, this goes for any president. I don't care your skin color, your race, your party, whatever. I, I do feel like you shouldn't be able to do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see how this unfolds soon. I, I don't know. At least, at least the change isn't going to be immediate. Go, what you mean? Like, you got to wait for um Like, a few January? months. And, like, it's not like he's going to nah, be... Right to it. You think so? Yeah, he it's said It's going to be January? I don't know, man. Yeah, he said first day he got some things he wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> Trump, but I don't know. Like, I know Savon said, like, yeah. and for if I'm allowed to be dramatic for one day, today's the day. So mm -hmm. please allow me to be dramatic. But, like, I know Savon said, like, oh, we, you know, we're still in control of our own life. And I, I believe that as well. Like, I'm a very, like, mm -hmm. my own perspective, you know, I determine my reality. I'm very like that. But, yeah. like, I don't know. If these things really happen, like... I'll, I'll just stick to the, you know, abortion bans and, like, the reproductive rights. Like, I really do feel like the reason why we're so scared is because, like, that really the, makes us feel like we are not in control of our lives. Yeah, you know, like, and, that is why it is so important. So And not for nothing. Things are changing that we probably assume could never change ever before. Me, personally, Roe v. Wade, I thought could never be touched when I was coming up. <laughs> he literally, they overturned that shit and Trump I'm took credit to, for it. I'm so. trying to tell you, yeah. And even with the Supreme Court justices he's appointed in, in his tenure... It goes back to my checks and balance point, right? And when you got mm -hmm. somebody that got certain people in pocket ready to go, you got to be careful. I like my presidents to be predictable. <laughs> the unpredictable ones, I don't like that. Uh, well, Kamala, lady, I'm so proud of you. She <laughs> ran a beautiful campaign. Oh, and just this last thing, and then I feel like we could move off of this. Yeah. But I've been keeping up with one of my favorite pods is Pod Save America, and the hosts are, they worked on Obama's campaign. Mm. And oh, I don't sure. know, you know, you could feel however you feel about President Obama, but one thing he knows how to do, he ran a flawless campaign. He won twice. That was some ill so, marketing. Yes. So it clearly worked. <laughs> so the hosts, they, they worked in that era. So they know, my point is, like, they know what a beautiful campaign looks like. Mm -hmm. And even they agreed that Kamala Harris did all that she could do. She ran a great campaign. Yeah. I'm proud. You know, that is a black Indian woman. Oh, and also, I want to say this when... Savon was on the phone with his dad when you were talking about your grandma, like, mm -hmm. getting his up, ass up to vote. I know Karen told me not to pander during this episode, but I just got to shout out the black women. Mm -hmm. They have consistently voted in crazy majority. That's true. In the right side of history. That's all I'm going to say. That so, is true. Shout out to the black true, women for, for sure. always holding it down. Hey, man, you know, man. shout out to the people. Hopefully by the next election, you guys realize how important your vote truly is, especially for you guys in Pennsylvania, Georgia, Nevada, All Michigan. The states. These are really important states when it comes to that electoral vote in that college. So, 